Well, hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I wanted to go ahead and open up the Bible. I want to learn a little bit more about God because uh, it's my firm belief that the more we know God, the more we fall in love with Him. Matter of fact, I would even make the point that the more we know Him, the harder it is to not fall in love with Him more. That's just the way it is. It, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a downward spiral. It's actually an upwards spiral, but it's, it's a beautiful thing. The more we know God, the more we love Him. So I'm going to go ahead and break open the Bible, and I'm going to turn to a, a just a small handful of verses, starting with Jeremiah 10, 10. Here we go. But the Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. The whole earth trembles at his anger. The nations cannot stand up to his wrath. Say this to those who worship other gods. Your so-called gods, who did not make the heavens and the earth, will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. So right there it says that God is the only God that there is. There is only one God. There's only ever been one God. The, the reason the Bible in other places, and in this one too, talks about other gods is because the human heart is basically a, a factory that pumps out other gods. We, we take some aspect of God's divinity or, or maybe maybe his authority or we make the world revolve the universe center around this person this place this thing maybe it's even just an idea maybe it's maybe it's another thing that we will actually call a God but we, we do this all the time and just because we call it a God, just because we act like the universe centers around this, or at least our own little world centers around this, does not actually make it a God. There's only one. Matter of fact, uh, John, in the Gospel of John, Jesus himself addresses this. <clears throat> John 17, 3. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one whom you sent to earth. He backs this up a little bit further in uh, the epistle. 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 10. All who believe in the Son of God know their, in their hearts that this testimony is true. Those who don't believe this are actually calling God a liar. And because they don't believe, God has testified about his Son. <clears throat> so, we can see right here that, again, Jesus is reinforcing this whole concept that there is one God. He's it. There's no more. And the Bible talks about how, and matter of fact, even just basic philosophy tells us that if there's a divine being who made the heavens and the earth, he has to have all knowledge. <clears throat> we can understand that. We can understand bits and pieces of it because we are made in his image. We have some understanding, but we don't know everything. God knows everything. And he made everything. He made physics the way it is. He made ecosystems the way it, they are. All of this and more. He made it all. He set it all up. He designed it. It runs on his will and He's God. And so when we chase after knowing God's creation, it's a good thing. It's absolutely a good thing. And we just recognize, we just have to humbly recognize that our understanding is growing. It's incomplete. Whereas God's is complete. He knows everything. All truth is, after all, God's truth. And so in that way, we can chase after truth. The truth is an extremely valuable commodity. And we need to, when we find it, we need to hold on to it and treasure it because it is a gift from God. And we can see that and we can know that truth and we can remind ourselves that indeed there is only one God. And despite what our hearts tend towards in making up other gods, that doesn't mean it's true. There's only one. He's the only one who deserves glory. He's the only one who deserves our worship and more besides. That's all I had for you guys. I hope it helps your day. I hope to give you some food for thought. 
I love you, and I'll see you later. Bye.